Mm. The whole flavor dynamic changes. They are not the same anymore. Dude, this is actually like popcorn shrimp now. Yeah, very good. I'm Chris Thorne, that's Zachary Fowler, and this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge in Texas. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch it and cook it. It's day 14, and I survived the sub-freezing temperatures. Um, for reference, my underquilt is only rated for 30 degrees, and it got to 26 as a low last night. 26. So even those microscopic 3 degrees below the rating just pierced through that uh, underquilt. We don't have hog yet, but we have a good bacon substitute, which are basically fried cracklins that we came up with last night. For those of you guys who saw episode 13, you guys got to see them being cooked, but I'm actually gonna give you guys a taste test over at the table. If you don't know what we're talking about, you definitely need to go back and watch the rest of the episodes that are up here in the playlist. But we're, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome fatty breakfast to get your energy up, get everything motivated and moving early in the morning on the coldest days. So in the middle of cooking our cracklings, um, I had the idea, I was like, oh man, I would love, this reminds me of tempura. If only we did this for crawdads. So Zach got the idea to grab some crawdads from the keeper trap and just fry them up and just have fried shrimp. So we get fried survival shrimp with cracklings this morning, so that is one epic breakfast. Wham! So that is breakfast, and that looks awesome. All right, say grace, Lord. Thank you for this food. Bless this food to our body. Help us to get more food. In Jesus' name, Amen. Man, just you know, dive in here. Be super selfish. Yeah, let's have that big one. That was your idea. <laughs> I need to try one of these out first before I get all cray cray with it. <laughs> get cray cray with the cray crays. Oh, look at the fat drip out of their bodies when you try to poke the meat out. It, they definitely fried up in the fat. Well, well there isn't a lot of meat. Mm. Tastes much better though. Oh yeah. It tastes like, like they've been buttered. Oh. That is so juicy. There is like so much. Oh. There's, there's a lot of muchness to this. Yeah, the cracklins are definitely further along than last time. Let me just go. Oh, fried crawdads. That is a good idea. Mmm. Like that look good? Sure, man. Mmm. Yep. Cracklins. Impossible to see. Well, nope. hard to show you. Not much to see. They're just little fried up bits of fat. With a crawfish. Mmm. They're just crawfish, but man, are they good fried? And now they're like fried. This. Fried crawfish. Mmm. The whole flavor dynamic changes. They are not the same anymore. They are drastically and ferociously improved. I wish you could just eat the whole thing the way you can, like with a, a shrimp, you know? Like, just crunch it shell and all when you fry them up real good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. 
gonna try it. See what happens. Oh, eat the whole thing? Yeah, I'm gonna eat the whole little tail and shell in there. Mm. It actually works. There you I, go. I don't know if I'd try it with a really big one, but the softer ones, tinier ones. Crunch it right up with the shell. Oh. When that hit the spot and I having to pick at it. Hmm. But of course I'm a weirdo. When I eat peanuts, like every tenth peanut, I like to eat it with the shell and chew the whole shell up. Yeah, I'd call that weird. Yeah. <laughs> There's gonna be someone on my channel like, I do that too. I'm not weird. That's not weird, that's where you're supposed to eat them. What are you talking about? I eat all mine with the shell on. Mmm. Ooh, try one with the the smallest one with it, just eating the whole thing. It really is good. It doesn't taste like there's anything there. Mmm. I will. But just in case I don't like it. Make sure I get mine going ahead of a few of these. Dude, this is actually like popcorn shrimp now. Yeah. Very good. Crawdad fried in raccoon fat. And now we got all this fat. What are we gonna do with it next? I used some of this earlier. As a fire starter. And restarted the fire. I was like, had it all going, a little bit of flame. Ooh. Yeah, you don't need lighter fluid. That's a, that's a myth. Just well, it tastes raccoons. really good. Deer tenderloins. Or stew a rabbit. And because there's no fat on them, then take it out and, and throw all the meat up. in here and fry it up. Oh, dude, think about it. Work oh. with me. Fried turkey. Oh, fried turkey. Oh, that is within our grasp, actually. Or a deep fried turkey. Oh, we don't have that much fat. <laughs> but we can we can slice off pieces. Mm-hmm. Have fried turkey legs or something. That's that's oh. not, that's not impossible. Mm-hmm. Alright guys, got a blowgun. Have a heart trap. I need to rebate it. And even though we have a raccoon. And we're good to go. I want to go ahead and set this thing out for overnight to make sure that we have everything we need for quite a few days. Because with the weather dropping and getting colder, we want to make sure we can keep our calories and energy up because your body wants to start hibernating and shutting down in these much colder climbs. All right, guys. So we're going down to the creek. And it doesn't look like the other trap has gone off. But we'll go down and check and see what's going on anyway. Maybe somebody got clever, decided to eat all the bait while we were gone. So, just follow. And this area right here is really muddy, so I'm just playing a little game of hopscotch on the sandstone to make it a little easier to get through. So it looks like something has been nibbling on the food, but nothing actually got tripped or trapped. So let's check everything out, see what's up. Yeah, now I got a clever little bugger who's able to get the food behind, inside, and everything without tripping this trap. My have a heart trap seems to be much more sensitive, so it looks like we're gonna have to rebait both traps to make sure we've got food for the next couple days. But like I said, we've got a whole raccoon. It is a 35 pound raccoon, it's huge. And we have much, much smaller raccoon fed us for three to four days. So I suspect the next three to four days will be just fine. But with that said, I'd rather uh, go ahead and put the traps out and not catch anything for the few days, but know everything's set and ready than to need the food and then have to go and do it later. So trap is reset. It's literally nothing more than a can of cat food. Given the fact that for whatever reason, Cat food is the ultimate trap food for raccoons. Uh, not sure why, but I ain't arguing. So it's time for a two mile trek back to go help Zach get his new 50 caliber Dragon Claw air rifle sighted in. So in the last seven days, compared to the first seven days, we caught a lot of stuff. We caught crawdads, water snakes, possums, a whole bunch of crap. But they were all small. 
in this past seven days from day basically day seven to day 14 we caught two raccoons and a soft shell turtle that's it however those particular items are so much more substantial in their fat and calories that those just those three animals have kept two full-grown adults going for seven days it's pretty exciting when you think about it now if you were in a survival situation since we are almost halfway through tomorrow will be the halfway point it'll be day 15 i want you guys to drop down in the comments and tell me exactly what you would do similarly and what you would do differently than what we're doing for our 30-day challenge in the manner that if you were here with me right now what tools for hunting and gathering how would you go about extracting calories you know the whole shebang write a paragraph it's all good i'd like to know your thoughts and your story since by the time this video airs i'll be out and i'll be able to answer those questions all right we're walking back to camp zach's getting his air rifle all set up and it looks like we're going to be sighting in here in a moment Zach's gonna be hand pumping this because in a survival situation, he wouldn't be able to have air tanks and everything. So we're gonna do it all survival-like. And I really wanna see how many pumps it takes to get to the center of that big old 50 cal tits pup. So Zach has pumped this over a hundred times and he's only one fifth of the way there. However, the trade-off for that is after you're expending a lot of energy to pump this up, but the capabilities of what you can bring down from like a big huge turkey, a hog, or a deer can be almost a week's worth of calories, if not more. So if you play your cards right, this can still be worth its while. How many pumps do you win right now? 200. He's 200 pumps in. 200. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is one hell of a workout. He, he's he's getting all these muscles all toned up, which is... It gets harder as you pump, too, because the pressure gets higher. Yeah, if we weren't eating every day, he'd probably collapse. Um, no, not him personally, but I'm saying anyone in a survival situation. But um, I'd be pumping it up the 100 for just so I get three shots and get something. Yeah, so I have an interesting question for you guys down in the comments section of this video. I've already asked you a really cool question, but we'll ask you another one. So with a PCP air rifle as a survival rifle, a 22 or a compound bow, given their weight and usability, they all have extreme pluses and extreme minuses on either spectrum. This one, I would say pumping because you only get what eight shots out of it we're not per... i'm not sure yet yeah. I, I i'm thinking actually now because it was on just barely on green and i got four shots yesterday okay well out of it so now some of you guys might be asking well guys why didn't you just bring like a marlin 60 or like a ruger 1022 well in a real survival situation where sh really hit the fan where the fecal matter does hit the vertical oscillator yes bring a 22 bring a, a brake barrel all day long but the fact that it's not legal in Texas to hunt with a 22 or rimfire or anything like that, we have to have, this is kind of the next best really cool thing. So there you go, 280 pumps to be able to start uh, hunting and practicing and the thing is is he's sighting this in so this is gonna be a very tiring day so I don't advise him unless he gets really froggy to go hunt until tomorrow morning I can't remember if I'm supposed to let the valve the pressure off the pump and then open this Slide the chamber open, pop one in the chamber. That's a huge slug. That's a huge. That's, that's a big pellet for an air rifle. Yeah, 50 caliber, yeehaw.
place the butt of the arrow in and then fold the feathers all so they're in the all in the same direction. Give a little twist. There we go. And down the arrow. And then a broadhead can normally go on to here, right? But I'm not doing that on the practice target, so I could just press it in until it seats good. And there's a special thing for broadheads that you can help push them in. Working on getting the fire started for dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and get these reeds on. I'm gonna start building up some smaller sticks. I was gonna use the sear strip tonight, but I'm gonna use Smurf crap just for tonight. I think in the morning I'm gonna give sear strip some love. They're freaking amazing. Yep, the fire likes buddies. Tenderloins off, I'm gonna cube it up and toss it in there. Roll all that fat. Ooh, that's looking good. More heat on the fire? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing it needs overnight. If I pour off some of the broth, I'll be able to side the cold side. Wow, that's hot steam coming off the top of that. Yeah? Ooh. That's like liquid fat right there. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna add some of my chupacabra. Finally get to eat the raccoon that we got we got yesterday. Raccoon tenderloin. Nothing like good old back straps. I'm gonna pour some of this broth back in because it's like a half an inch of fat. <laughs> I wanna actually be able to pull my meat out and eat it.
through here. You just you don't get a good couple of spoonfuls. You get a bunch of spoonfuls in that. So the belly piece. We should definitely add more water and let this cook down tonight. Yeah, it needs it. I'll have a super big feast in the morning. Mm-hmm. Cooking our soup. Delicious on the back straps. Mmm. Yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. It's so cold out here. This is just like, uh, tonight's supposed to be the last night of it being really, really cold. Thank goodness. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Yep. Mm-hmm. That hits the spot. I'm going to sit by the fire and eat mine. We definitely nailed it with the old raccoon. Cutting up the pieces, cooking like that, smoke them. I can almost taste the smoky flavor of it. Smoking, because it's been smoking for almost a day by the time I cubed it up and put it in there. Mm -hmm. It really adds a lot to it, smoking it for that long, I think. And variety, when we've already had one coon before, a possum. Just stewed up. We're just mixing it up. We had the uh, the crispies. What mm -hmm. are they called? Yeah, like crispies turning our fat into cracklins. Yeah, we we turned the fat into cracklins. We mm -hmm. used the the actual oil to fry up Crawfish. the uh, the crawdads. Mm -hmm. Then we're eating the backstrap nuggets with some soup. I mean, just keeping it spicy and fun, and just doing things just a little different puts a really good twist and makes your meal time much far more enjoyable. Hmm. But if we had known it was gonna be this cold though, what would have been enjoyable is if we had built a shelter. <laughs> okay. However, I'm gonna go take this awesome cup. This is my titanium cup from uh, Heavy Cover. And go sit by the fire. With huh? my sprongs and sit by the fire. It's cold again. It's about 30 degrees outside. For anybody who doesn't know what that means, it's about negative two degrees Celsius for anybody outside the US. Uh, not crazy epically cold, but for South Texas, super insane. Um, got my Whoopi with me, and uh, Zach got his hot rocks thing going on. I managed to kind of just bury my head under everything, and I was able to get warm, which was good. Tomorrow is day 15. That means we are halfway completed with our survival challenge. It's super exciting. The meal tonight with the super, super fatty soup and the raccoon back straps were absolutely fantastic. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And I'm super excited to go out with Zach in the morning on his morning hunt and see if we can grab a turkey with his 50 caliber dragon claw. Freaking awesome. Just super ballistic missile level <laughs> air gun which is super cool i can't believe air guns have evolved that much since when i was a kid as a little daisy duke plinkster to now they can take out elk freaking nuts